What is up everybody? So check it out. I actually have a clean garage for once. This is awesome. Look at that. I got my drill press, my, my saw, and actually open space. And the MR2's over here looking pretty, pretty dusty that is. Other than that, we're, we're pretty clean, so that's pretty nice. And tonight, I wanna go ahead and start a project that I have alluded to many, many times in other videos and I have not gotten around to it, so I am really excited to do it. And that is making a GoPro case for my Hero 3. So I get it, I get it, a Hero 3 is super old. Um, and to be honest, I'm not very happy with the camera overall, especially its low light performance. Um, but it's what I got and I just can't justify paying what GoPro wants for the new 7s. Um, they're good cameras, I'm sure, but especially after owning the 3, I think there's a lot of buying the name going on when you buy a GoPro. So I figured for now, I'll go ahead and try and muddle through with what I got. So I'll probably buy like the, I think it's a Yi is the brand camera um, next. Before you start hating that I'm buying a Chinese brand, guess what? These GoPros aren't made in America either, so, so don't be a hater. Um, but for now, I think if I can just get this thing encased in aluminum, um, that way the, the coolant won't kill the plastic case around it, I should be good to go and I should be able to get some better videos out for you guys. All right, so this is kind of what I have planned out so far. So you can see just a little piece of aluminum um, plate that's going over a clear lens, a little round lens that I've got. Um, ordered that from McMaster. With, that's connected to the main body of the camera. That's what I'm going to try and cut out first. And then I've got just a little backing plate that is held on with four little um, like thumb screws. And there's also a gasket in between the backing plate and the body. So this is what we're gonna be making. Right now, this is actually two parts. I've got a plate right here. I thought originally about making this in two parts. So if I changed camera later on, I would just take this plate out or machine a new one that fit the new camera. And I intentionally made this pocket big enough to fit the newer cameras. Um, but I decided to say screw it and just leave that material in. I mean, later on, if I really wanted to, I could touch off on this part again and mill the rest out and make a plate. So I could do that later. Or um, I've got plenty of material. I could just make one from scratch again. So that is kind of the design. This is what I'm planning on making tonight. Um, the cam is pretty simple. If you go into there, I've got my first setup. I'm going to hold it like this way. So Z is pointing up right now. Uh, mill out the pocket, mill out the outer perimeter, mill out all of this, and then we're going to flip it. So it sits like that. Now Z is up, but I'm touching off on the, the surface I just machined and the side that I just machined, or both sides that I just machined, and just decking it off and drilling these four holes and knocking out this uh, uh, recessed part for the, the sight glass. So it's pretty straightforward, and then you know, of course, you got some chamfers here and there, but but nothing too too crazy. So let's see what she can do. All right, so we are all set up. Um, got that nice big hefty block there. Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous because I'm only actually holding on to a little bit more than an eighth of an inch on the sides here. So I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough when I really get into um, the roughing out that pocket. So that's got me a little nervous. And then the other thing that I'm a little nervous about is I am rocking some wicked stick out, especially on the eighth inch guy right here. Um, not a fan of that. I'm going to keep a really close eye on it. It's kind of one of those things where if I could, or if I wanted to spend the time, I'd kind of go back and maybe make the design a little bit different where instead of it being one piece with a big pocket, it would be, um, two pieces. So it would have a front piece, really three pieces for the assembly, a front piece, and then a middle section that goes straight through and a back plate. 
but sometimes you just got to try stuff. Um, we'll, we'll see what that end mill does with that much stick out and see if we get anything good out of it. And so hopefully this is the last time I have to give this apology that I'm not going to be getting any good footage of the actual machining process because I don't have a good GoPro case. Hopefully this solves that problem uh, and just this couple video series most likely of me making this um, case is the last of that and you'll have some good footage. All right, so after doing the half inch end mill, so that's my roughing operation, um, stopping, I don't know, two or three times to clear out chips in the pocket. Um, that's one thing I want to note that this cooling or coolant system does not have the oomph to really push material out of this pocket. Um, the pocket's over an inch deep. So especially when I was helixing in um, to make the, the pocket deeper, um, it just, there wasn't a lot of, um, room around the end mill so it was the depth to i guess width ratio was was pretty high um, so a lot of recutting chips and sounded nasty but got through it another thing is this end mill does not have flutes that are as tall as this surface here so you see on this side um, it shows a little bit of rubbing the tool must have been getting a little warm on that side but overall, not bad. Um, if I were to make a ton of these, I'd probably get an end mill that could like, um, had a, a cutting surface all the way and the whole depth of it. So the next step I wanna do involves my arch nemesis. For those of you that don't know what it is, it is saran wrap. I hate this stuff. But I wanna go ahead and um, kind of give a little bit of a test fit of my camera on here. And obviously I don't want to destroy it by getting it all soaked with coolant. So that's what I'm gonna try next. And it may not even fit at all right now because I don't have the rest of the operations done. I just thought of that. So I might just go ahead and run the other ops and see what that gets me first. That's probably a better idea. All right, she is done. Let's check it out. I think she turned out pretty darn nice if I do say so myself. Keeping in mind that I haven't actually put the, the GoPro in there to try it out yet, but there it is so and obviously i haven't decked off the bottom so that's why you can't see through it yet um, i haven't taken it off the mill yet because i want to test everything out while it's still um, touched off because you never touch off the same exact way twice so let's give it a whirl got my camera in the saran wrap
Uh, I don't, it feels like the lens isn't going in the little round portion. So I may need to run some stock to leave, negative stock to leave on that. Oh, oh, there it just sat down. There we go. Hope I'm not ripping that saran wrap in there. I might not need this camera case. Okay, she sits right in there, nice and solid. Exactly what I was going for. There you go. So you can see it kind of sits in that, that front plate that I showed you in the CAD, or CAM CAD, whatever. Um, so it keeps it from twisting or anything, even though there's a kind of a gap between the camera and the, the case. Um, the reason I put that gap there was so that it would be easier to get the camera out. You can kind of stick your fingers in there and kind of pop it out. And I didn't want, um, well, I guess it was still going with the max dimensions of um, the GoPro series so that if I wanted to, I, the idea was I could change that plate out. So I think that'll work and I do like having that extra gap there. Um, I'm hoping, because I run on hopes and dreams at Rival, um, that the Wi-Fi signal will work through there uh, and maybe that little air gap there will keep the sensors uncovered and, and it'll work. So I guess I'll go ahead and take this off the vise. It's a lot lighter than it started, that's for sure. A little bit of rubbing on the surface finish, but I'm okay with that. So I took the case inside, I went ahead and cleaned everything out, and I uh, went ahead and test fitted my GoPro back in it. I ran into a little issue. Um, I think what the problem is, is on the CAD file that I downloaded from GradCAD, I think the lens is slightly off position relative to the outside dimensions of the camera. So what I'm left with is the camera itself, which feeds into um, the pocket where the lens goes first, is a little bit offset inside here and so it's not lining up where the outline of the camera should sit um, and where there's a pocket already at so it sits down on one side but then it wants to be raised up on the other side all right so right here you can kind of see that it's a deeper pocket or it sits a little deeper right here versus over here um, that's the issue um I think my solution is I'm going to go ahead and redraw where the pocket for the lens should be and it'll end up just a little bit oblong of a hole, a little bit of an oval, and then the lens should sit down where it should and that'll allow the whole camera to shift over and sit down how it should centered in here. So I didn't want to leave you hanging um, to let you know how it fits and everything, but other than that, it's, it's a really nice fit I think. So I think it should work out pretty well. So one other thing to note, you may have kind of been looking at the design, especially in the CAD file or even here where um, I don't have any buttons. I don't have anything, right? Uh, and obviously this is the front. It'll have basically a hole for a lens and that is it. The thought here is that I'm gonna be able to use Wi-Fi. Um, not 100% sure. I'm, I might be building myself a Faraday cage here. So if, if I'm not able to use Wi-Fi, if I won't go through the aluminum, the next option is just to turn the camera on to record, position it, and then run it. I'm usually not out here actually recording for more than, I don't know, an hour or two at a time. So I think just having to come in here, you know, when I'm ready to record, turning the camera on, sticking it in here, and, and running the machine will be okay. But ideally, I'll be able to, with the GoPro app on my phone, just go ahead and turn this thing off and on and, and it'll all be good to go. So that's the goal, fingers crossed. So no prior research was really done uh, to see if the Wi-Fi will work. So hopefully I'll be uh, back with this project next week. It just kind of depends on how busy I get. But until then, I will see you next time.